Most Google Ads campaigns are doomed before they're even started. There's a lot of research out there that 20, 30, 40, even 50% of your ad spend is wasted inside of Google Ads. But if you're subscribed to this channel, I'll give you a second to do that if you haven't already. You know how important it is to operate a lean and mean Google Ads account that can generate more leads and more revenue for your business. So in this week's video, I'm gonna share with you four settings that most advertisers get wrong. And the thing that kills me is this wastes businesses thousands and thousands of dollars every single year. My name is Scott Redgate, I'm an online marketing coach and I've managed tens of millions of dollars inside of Google Ads. So I've made a lot of mistakes, but I also know those things that you can do to make a real difference for your business. So as I said, I'm gonna share with you four settings that a lot of businesses get wrong in Google Ads and make sure to look out for number three. It's an old one, but businesses haven't learned their lesson and they continue to do it over and over again. And if you wanna save more money in Google Ads, make sure to grab my free PPC cost-cutting cheat sheet. You can get it at scottredgate.com slash cheat sheet and I'll leave a link in the description below. Hey friend, well, I'm so excited to share with you these settings and the reason why is because I've just seen from personal experience and I've managed tens of millions of dollars in Google Ads that a lot of businesses get these settings wrong and they end up costing them thousands and thousands of dollars every single year. So if you can get them right, or if you, at least you can have a basic understanding of what they are, you're going to be so far ahead of the game. And so this, these are settings that most of your competitors probably have enabled or they're just not aware of and it's causing them to waste a lot of money. The first two settings that we're gonna talk about are more at the account level or are settings that apply to most campaign types inside of Google Ads. Now the first one is a setting that I've actually done an entire video on and it is auto apply recommendations. And so let me show you how to get to the auto apply recommendation section inside of Google Ads. Well, inside of my dummy account, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and click this recommendations tab. And then here you're going to see auto apply. So I'm going to select that. And currently in my account, underneath these two dropdowns, there's eight auto apply recommendations that I could enable for this maintain your ad section. And there's 14 auto apply recommendations that I could enable inside this grow your business section. Now, what are auto apply recommendations? Now, essentially what they are is you're giving Google the green light to make changes on your behalf for any of the criteria underneath these dropdowns. So let me give you an example of one of these auto apply recommendations and how it could actually negatively impact your campaign. So let's scroll down a little bit here and let's go to this one right here. Bid more efficiently with maximized conversions. And it says, get more conversions at a similar cost with a fully automated bid strategy. Now, I am a fan of automated bidding, especially after your account has a little bit of history and you have a lot of conversion data to work with. I think that automated bidding can be a really good tool in your toolkit to help you achieve your goals. However, there are certain campaigns where you don't want to leverage automated bidding. And I'll give you an example of that. Let's say you have a branded search campaign, meaning you have a campaign that you are just exclusively targeting your brand name. Now, because of the nature of this campaign, you're actually going to be able to get clicks for relatively cheap costs. So it's going to be relatively inexpensive. And that's comparing it to if you have a competitor that's trying to bid on your brand name because because of your quality score for your own brand name, you're able to get your cost per click at a fraction of what competitors would have to pay. So an example of that is you might be able to get most of the clicks for your branded search terms for less than a dollar. I've seen branded search clicks for less than 20 cents consistently and still be, and those businesses have still been able to maintain a super high impression share for their branded search terms. And so in summary, a branded search campaign where you're targeting your branded keywords on exact match or phrase match, you might be able to get clicks for 25 cents, 50 cents. However, if you had auto apply recommendations enabled and this was a campaign that Google had identified could lead to more conversions, at least with what they believe, you might actually switch from a manual CPC approach or a maximize clicks approach with a bid ceiling to maximize conversions. So you might have gone from a campaign where you were getting 25, 50 cent clicks for your brand name, and then all of a sudden you started paying six, $7 a click for your branded search keywords. 
And so again, it's not that Google is intentionally trying to make your results worse. This is just a scenario where they don't really understand the true intent or the purpose behind your campaign. And then they apply this auto apply recommendation that causes havoc. So where you were able to get really cheap clicks for your brand term, they start expanding it. And now you're paying an arm and a leg. And so there's a lot of other auto apply recommendations that can be very dangerous if you aren't keeping an eye on them. And just as this name implies, these recommendations will be auto applied to your account. And honestly, it's a little bit tricky and it's a little bit difficult to see what was actually auto applied and then undoing those changes if it's something that you didn't want to happen. And so in my professional opinion, I recommend disabling almost every single one of these auto apply recommendations that allows Google to make changes automatically for you. Let's hop into another campaign where I'll share with you another setting that you need to look out for. Okay, I'm going to hop into this performance max SEO coaching test campaign and I'm going to hit the gear icon here to get to the campaign settings. And it's going to take a second here to load. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this location setting. And you've probably put some thought behind the locations that you're actually showing advertisements for. So if you're a local business, you probably don't have the entire United States set up for your location. You probably have a very small radius or your city or your region or whatever. But underneath this location options is something that you need to look out for. And it's this one right here. It's either presence or interest or presence. So Google defines it as presence or interest as people in, regularly in, or who have shown interest in your included locations, whereas presence is people in or regularly in your included locations. All right, so let's say you have a local business. Well, obviously you would want to have the presence option selected because you're not going to show ads to people who are just interested in your targeted location. So here's an example of this. Let's say you have a local HVAC business and you accidentally selected presence or interest instead of presence. And let's say your business is located in an area that people frequent. Maybe business travelers are coming in for meetings or maybe people vacation in your area. Well, if those people who are typically outside of your region are searching for information on your town and are showing interest, well, you might actually pay for clicks for those people who don't even own a property in your service area. So that's why it's super important to select presence instead of presence or interest, especially in those scenarios where you're a local business and you have a local radius that you service. All right, so let's hop into setting number three, which I alluded to at the beginning of the video, is something that's an old one, but businesses continue to get wrong over and over again. So let me hop into one of my test search campaigns. And underneath this networks tab, I'm gonna click this to expand it, and you'll see here you've got the search network, and it says include Google search partners, and it also has the display network, and it says include Google display network. Now this one's kind of like a 1A and a 1B or a two part setting. And here's the reason why. So the primary purpose of this search campaign is to get your ad in front of people when they are active, searching for related search queries or terms related to the, your business and the products and services that you offer. The intent behind a search campaign or the purpose for why you would launch a search campaign is completely different from the core intent for the display network. Now think of display network ads as, as you're going across the internet, whether you're looking at forums or news websites, usually on a lot of the websites, you'll see ad blocks that contain either text-based or image-based Google ads. And let's say a user is reading an article on a particular news website in the United States, it's an election year. So let's say they're reading a news article about the 2024 presidential race. Well, think of it this way. Their mind is not actively searching for your products and services. They are doing something else. So even if your ad has a prominent location on that news article webpage, things like click the rate are going to be very different from that placement on a news article versus if you're appearing, appearing at the top of the Google search results for the products and services that they're typing in. And so I am not anti-display network. I actually have it as one of my pillar campaigns in my overall Google ads strategy, but it's not something that I like to blend with my search strategy. So the easy win here is to uncheck the box that says Google display network and to keep these two campaign types separate. 
The next setting here is whether or not you want to include the Google search partners. Now click the link above or in the description if you want to see my whole video on the Google search partners and all the ins and outs of what it is. But I think the core thing that you need to realize is that the Google search partners goes well beyond just the Google search page. So it might include lower quality search engines, it might include Google search, it might even include these search results pages on specific websites that aren't even related to what you do. And so when you're just starting out and you're launching a campaign, I wouldn't recommend including the Google search partners because usually you're gonna see lower quality results than just the core search network. Now, if you've seen unbelievable results on the search network and you want to expand your reach, that could be something that you would want to test, including the search partners and seeing what types of incremental revenue you could pick up on those new networks. But overall, I'd recommend unchecking the including display network and unchecking including Google search partners when I'm launching a brand new Google search campaign. All right, so the fourth and final setting that we're going to review is specific to display network campaigns. And so in order to find this setting, we're actually going to need to click into a display campaign. So I'm gonna click into this manage placements display campaign. And then when you are at the ad group level, click the gear icon so you can access the ad group settings. All right, once you are in the ad group settings, select this pencil icon right here and select edit ad group targeting. And then right here underneath my actual targeting that I've set up is something that says optimize targeting and it's currently set to on. I'm gonna explain this in the quickest and most efficient way that I can. All right, if you have input placements or the exact targeting that you want, optimized targeting allows Google to go well beyond that targeting that you intended to show your ads on or to. So in this example, there's actually two local news websites that I've set as my placements for this campaign. But if I was to have optimized targeting on, it would go well beyond those news websites. And so it might go to other news websites. It might show my ad on different apps. It might show my ad to people that just have a small chance to even become my customer. And here's an example for you. Let's say your business sells hardware and tools. And so your audience and your targeting that you've set up inside this campaign are consistent to go out and find people that could potentially be your customer. But let's say you have optimized targeting set up and Google's data suggests that there's a lot of individuals that are interested in hardware and tools that are also interested in video games. All of a sudden, 70% of your ad spend could be going to people that are interested in video games and only 30% is actually going into your intended audience of people that are interested in hardware and tools. In some business verticals, this example might be a bit extreme. If you select optimized targeting, you might still just show to your core audience base with just a small you know, 10% additional audience being added to it. But I've seen some businesses where it almost completely took over the entire campaign where the intended audience only got a super small fraction. I'm talking less than one tenth of the overall impressions compared to the optimized targeting audience. And so in a nutshell, I'd recommend unselecting optimized targeting unless you have an established Google Ads display campaign. And again, you're looking to just see what you can do beyond your actual audience that you selected. All right, so in summary, the four sneaky settings that you need to look out for as you're setting up a new Google Ads account or creating new Google Ads campaigns. The first one is location, presence, or interest. My recommendation would be just to select presence instead of presence or, or interest so you can make sure that you're only showing in the geographic region that you would like. The next one is to disable Google Ads auto apply recommendations. And it's not to say that Google is intentionally trying to get you bad results. There's just so many instances where they don't understand your individual business needs. And by auto applying recommendations on your behalf, your campaign and the results that you see could go absolutely haywire. The third setting that we mentioned was for search campaigns. And this was to disable the search partners and the display network options inside your Google search campaign and only showing on the core Google search network. And last but not least, when you have a display campaign set up, do not go along with the optimized targeting because it allows Google to go well beyond your audience or the audience that you actually want to show your ads to. Hey friends, I hope this video was helpful for you. If you wanna save even more money in your Google Ads campaigns, make sure to watch this next video.